President Ramaphosa. I actually get tired of people always directing these open letters and messages to the president or to, yeah. And here I am pretty much doing the same thing. I guess this morning I had a conversation with someone who was about to start doing business with us. And our small businesses need it. We just feel like we're perhaps starting to recover from the difficult 18 month COVID period. And, um, and then this looting starts and this chaos in our country and the effect on larger businesses of such that they have to stop contracts with smaller businesses like us. I, anyone who knows me uh, would say that I always encourage that we become part of the solution. I'm in the leadership space. I've interviewed leaders for over 20 years. I've interviewed some of your, a couple of your predecessors. I um, have been watching you as a leader. I personally don't like the opposition politics standard of always criticizing the president, but you know, that's the nature of politics. I am absolutely of the belief that no one understands what you're going through and no one understands this principle that you do not know how to lead this country. And I don't mean that in a derogatory or a condescending kind of way. I think no one in our country, no individual is capable of or have been prepared sufficiently to be able to lead the complexities of our little microcosm of the world. But those who haven't done it can criticize. I've interviewed some several times, almost every one of the loud politicians, or opposition pol politicians who criticize you and who watch, watch you through a magnifying glass every single day of your life. Um, and a lot of them I respect. But they don't realize that even if they sat in your chair or walked in your shoes, they will discover that they haven't been prepared nearly well enough and could probably not be prepared well enough to lead this country. Doesn't mean they must not um, stop scrutinizing what you're doing or opposing or whatever, but, but they just don't know that you cannot lead this country. You don't have the ability. And I don't know what that means exactly. Um, you know, we want you to unite the country yet you cannot unite your party. Do people realize that requiring that of you is impossible? It's just not going to happen. If you can't unite your party, you will not have the confidence to unite the nation. So you're a, you're, you're a, you're a man with incredible background and, and skill and preparation and so on, but you, um, strangely enough, you do not have the confidence to lead this nation. You cannot lead your own party and I understand how complex it is to lead that party. Obviously, it's very difficult to, to lead people who are devious and who sit in dark, smoke-filled rooms and who, who care for themselves more than the country. You need to start showing that you care for the country more than for your party. You need to be more courageous. Forget about your legacy. Totally forget about your legacy. Just do what's right. So our little business will hopefully survive. You know, we, we have clients, but we really needed this one contract and we need more contracts. But, but every time we feel like just maybe we can start getting a bit of a rhythm, bang, another thing hits us. Um, and it's amazing how COVID and, and, and these... Um, ugly incidents we've had across the nation now, or Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal more specifically, how that actually impacts a little business. It hit home this morning when someone had to call me and confidentially tell me that they've been damaged so much that they might have to let people go and they've got to bring our contract to a halt and they cannot use us for now. So Mr. President, you've got to, um, you've got to certainly do what this individual told me this individual also told me that anyone who has the opportunity to leave this country should. There's no hope, there's no future. And I disagree, but 
the individual said that you have to listen more. You have to be on the ground listening to the people. And I heard someone wanting a confident president to lead in a way that we need him to lead. And I said to the person, we don't have a confident president. I don't care what he sounds like, what he, how he carries himself. He cannot be confident when he can't lead his own house, his own party. So put South Africa first. Focus on unity. Be extraordinarily courageous. Forget about your legacy. Just do what's right. Lead all the people. Focus on unity. I don't think you have the confidence to go into Natal while it's all happening and to go to the people and say, hey, I'm here, I'm your leader. Because I'm not sure you feel like that you are all of our leader. Anyway, um, difficult times ahead. I don't know what you can do except those few points that I raised. But just realize that you are not prepared and you are not able to lead this country. Humble yourself. Listen more. And, um, and to all the opposition leaders out there, trust me, none of you are prepared on your own to lead this country. You need extraordinary individuals around you, extraordinary teams around you. <clears throat> you need people with integrity and authentic leadership capability all the way through government structures. But Mr. President, you set the tone. And I really hope that you can do some things in the next few days and weeks that, I don't know, miraculously um, injects some confidence into this nation. All the best. Bye-bye.